work, Harry. Pop Jack's junk wasn't too much of a problem for you. Right. We better get back to the house. Mum and Dad are waiting to take us to Diagon Alley. What? And you've never travelled by blue powder before. You need to know a few things. When you're in the fireplace, say where you're going. And keep your elbows tucked in. Mind you get out at the right fireplace. Are you sure this is safe? Piece of cake. Go on, I can... <coughs> Ali. Harry had no idea where he was. All he could tell was that he wasn't in Diagon Alley. Evil-looking masks stared down from the wall, and rusty, spiked instruments hung from the ceiling. The sooner I get out of here, the better. Harry heard a noise from the door nearby, and two blurry shapes appeared on the other side of the glass. Harry looked quickly around and spotted a large black cabinet. He shot inside it and pulled the doors closed, leaving a small crack to peer through. Seconds later, a bell clanged. And Draco Malfoy stepped into the shop. The man who was with Draco could only be his father, Lucius Malfoy. Touch nothing, Draco. Mr. Malfoy was trying to sell the shopkeeper certain dark magical items that he didn't want the Ministry of Magic to find out about. Harry went to Flourish and Blots to buy his books. While he was in there, Gilderoy Lockhart, Hogwarts new Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher, was signing his latest book. Nice big smile, Harry. Together you and I were at the front page. Harry met up with Ron and Ginny Weasley. Lucius and Draco Malfoy were also there. Famous Harry Potter. Can't even go into a bookshop without making the front page. Ginny, who was very fond of Harry, defended him. Leave him alone. He didn't want all that. Lucius Malfoy insulted the scruffy state of the second-hand books Ginny had bought. I suppose those books are the best your father can give you. Lucius plucked a copy of A Beginner's Guide to Transformation from Jimmy's Cauldron, examined it briefly, and then replaced it. No one at that time realized how much of an effect this gesture from Lucius Malfoy would have on their lives, and they all left the shop none the wiser. They found the car in Charing Cross Road, and after making it invisible, flew it into the sky over London. They saw the Hogwarts Express far below and followed it for some time.
Looks like we've lost the train. Let's check out that tunnel. Really close. I didn't think we'd make it out of the tunnel. Excellent, Harry. To stay put, Ward. Try and land the car in the castle grounds. This 
something wrong with the car. I don't have control anymore. 